Hi there again guys, uh, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be doing a couple of little um, examples of JavaScript. So we're going to be doing a couple of alert boxes. I'm going to be uh, creating a uh, little math, math, math and math school calculation. Um, obviously uh, as you go through you, you could potentially adjust these to your uh, needs. I also just want to uh, create this using um, a program called Sublime Text because I want to show you that actually Dreamweaver isn't isn't necessary at all to be able to uh, make these sites. Um, Sublime Text is a is a free download. Um, as as you can see, I've got the website open right here, and it is literally as simple as clicking download, and then there's an option to to run it. Um, now, obviously, one of the issues, I say one of the issues, one of the um, reasons people like Dreamweaver is the live code view, so the, the preview. But actually, generally, in any any web developer won't use that because it's pretty inaccurate. So, you know, I appreciate that while it might be helpful at the beginning because you get an idea of what could be happening on the screen, it's not a browser. And therefore, when you do look at the um, finished result, quite frequently it does not match what was being displayed on the live preview, which is obviously a, a big issue. So, I mean, I, I don't use live view when I'm in Dreamweaver. Um, but there are other functions that I do quite like about it. Um, and therefore, something like a, a sublime text isn't isn't really too much of a big leap. Um, and I think it's just a case of getting used to this, because ultimately, um, when you are um, writing code, um, what you will do instead of that, and what you should do even if you are using Dreamweaver, is to preview it in a browser, frequently preview it in a browser. And the reason why you, pre um, you frequently preview it in a browser is because the quicker you spot errors within your code, the more uh, the, the quicker you'll be able to fix them. You know, you don't want to spend two hours working on some code and you, you're reliant on the um, preview in, the, in, in Dreamweaver. And then when you run it in a browser, it doesn't look anything like what you imagine. I mean, that's a, you're going to struggle to work out why that is, um, and, and B, you know, you, you might have to retrace several steps um, to be able to find out exactly what the um, what the issue is. So yeah, it's it's a free download. I mean, you can potentially buy it um, in order to register it fully. Um, now I must admit I haven't done this. So what will end up happening is um, when you are um, using sublime text and, and occasionally when you click on some buttons within sublime text so this is what it looks like um, you can see we have an unregistered across the top and um, it will pop up a little thing saying do you want to register it so if that happens when i'm busy working i mean you just click off it and just continue on your merry way really uh, i think if you were using it commercially i mean i don't think uh, 80 dollars is a, is a particularly expensive outlay to be brutally honest um, but obviously we're, we're not doing that in this in this example. Uh, it is an example, and therefore you know the the, the free version is perfectly fine. Um, so we let's say we are going to um, do a couple of little examples of JavaScript. Uh, and one of the things that Sublime Text doesn't do that Dreamweaver does do is populate your page with code from from the beginning so you're going to have to remember uh, exactly what to put it in and it's not it's not difficult stuff let's be honest um you're starting off with, if i clicked on it really wouldn't it you're starting off with your html you're opening html and then you're closing html tags so we're starting off by putting in the the structure so remember that in order for a web page to display, we need to be using some uh, HTML. And we can't just go straight ahead and use JavaScript. We, we need to be doing um, uh, the basic structure in there. So we're going to have a couple of head tags, and then we're going to have uh, a body tag. Now I'm going to put all of this example in the one page. Okay. So uh, you, you could split this up if you want to have different pages, and then you can call them. Um, 
whichever little um, example um, we're going to do. First, I'm going to do a save this. So I'm going to do file, save as, and um, I'm going to call this uh, script HTML. You you don't have to um, call yours exactly the same as mine. You can call yours whatever you want in this um, instance. Okay. Um, do remember to put the .html in uh, HTML at the end there because Sublime Text can get a little bit funny with this. Um, so if I save that, the code here has changed color. If your code doesn't change color, um, then you may want to go into the file and manually add .html at the end of it. So if if it doesn't look like this, you may want to right click, go to rename, and then manually add the .html to the end of it. Okay, I don't need to do that because mine is already saved as a HTML file. Okay, so that's what I want. Um, now, we'll start off by doing a little alert box, okay? Um, and I'm just going to add some, some basic structure in there. This is an alert box. I should obviously be indenting these. You, you don't have to put the same content in there as me. I'm just putting some filler in there, really. Um, Yeah, so what we have here is um, an input type of button. When somebody clicks on the button, it's going to search for uh, something called a function, uh, and this function is going to be called show alert. And we've not made this function yet. Um, and the value, so this is the value is what gets displayed on the button itself. Um, so if I save this, um, I've not actually opened it yet. If I save this, um, you can see this is what the page looks like. When you click on the button, it doesn't do anything because we haven't made the function yet. So let's make the function. And I'm going to put the function inside the header. Um, it's not something that I want to be displayed on the web page. Um, it's a, a behavior. OK, so the behavior is when somebody clicks on the button, that an alert box is going to appear. So we need to put in here some script. And we need to tell the browser that this is going to be JavaScript. I'm going to close the script right away and then put everything I need within here. So I'm, I'm going to put in the long run two functions in here. Um, well, we'll start off with just the one. So we'll start off by saying, okay, we're going to make a function. I've already named the function down here. I mean, you can do this in either order. You can make the function first and then uh, create the button or, you know, um, do what I've done, which is to create the button and then make the function. Um, it, it doesn't really matter what way around you make these. So we're going to have an alert button. And the alert button the alert button is going to just say something silly for me do remember at the end of each one of these type of lines you need to have a semicolon here we don't need a semicolon there but we need a semicolon for every line within the function okay so uh, alert box is going to pop up and it's going to say omg and alert box with many exclamation marks so i'm going to save that by doing control s and then i'm going to go into my page and hit refresh there um, uh, and then naturally, it hasn't done what I wanted it to do. Um, it's um, that would be because my function has been misspelled. What's an empty? Um, let's try it again. There we go. Um, so what happens when, you, when you're not paying attention? 
Okay, so you have a little alert box there, just pops up and says OMG in alert box. Now, uh, people get confused between um, alert boxes because ultimately, um, in the past, things like uh, alert boxes or pop ups used to be uh, very negatively um, thought of. But actually, you can use them for, for some quite useful things, like, for example, uh, if you're trying to prompt an end user to form, format something in a certain way, or if maybe they've omitted something. So, um, you know, they can they can be quite useful. That's the first um, little bit of JavaScript. The second one is going to be a little bit more complex. It's going to be one called do calculation. I'm going to uh, write out the function before I write out or before I put anything down below. So basically, this is going to take two numbers and we're going to add them together. OK, so. I'm going to create two two variables. I'm going to call one value one. I'm going to call one value two. This is going to be a little bit more complex, maybe than what you've seen previously. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have two input fields. One is going to be number one, and one is going to be number two. And the end user is going to put those in. And we need to, to be able to take those numbers, which um, will be down here. That's that's where the HTML will go. We're not made them yet. But we need to be able to take the numbers that are put in there and um, turn them into a, a string, Okay, so that we can actually do something. So pass float, and we're going to do something called document dot get element by ID. I'm actually going to go back and start writing that again because no, it's not giving me a prompt. Well, that must be something. Um, value. And the one below is literally uh, the same. But instead of value one, we have value two. But only two, and uh, I've missed out all of the semicolons there. I'll just go back and put all those in. Um, okay, so basically, what we're going to do, we're going to look. What we'll get element by ID means is that we're going to name something um, later in in the code in, in just a couple of minutes. In fact, uh, we're going to give it an ID. We're going to call one first one. We're going to call one second one, and and this is where it's going to find these values. So let's make those. Each one calculator, exclamation mark. By the way, um, with the um, alert box up here, I've this is obviously using uh, an addition, the um, which is this pink. Um, plus here, you can obviously do a multiplication or a division or whatever you want to do if you want to try that out. So a little bit different in terms of this is a text um, field to begin with. It's just pretty straightforward stuff. Do the same here. Text. I probably could have done a copy and paste job, to be honest with you. One of the nice things you'll see, by the way, is as I'm typing that, it will pop up the um, the, the name here. Um, so I'll just do that. 
which uh, prevents things like spelling errors, which is quite nice, as uh, you will have seen just now, in fact. Now we're going to put the button in there. Add numbers and then close it off. So now what should happen? Um, so I'm pausing a little bit because sometimes um, I, I get told I, I, I um, enter these in incorrectly but so hopefully um i've got that right so let's let's save it and let's run it okay so i've refreshed it and you can see my calculator has now got number one number two so if i put two and two and uh, no there's something not quite right there uh bear with me uh, a second okay let's that now let's try it out so I, I always, there we go, I always don't mind when people see that, that I've made um, errors in there because ultimately what it shows you is that, you know, I've, I've been doing this, this type of thing for many, many years and it's still likely that um, when we when we write this stuff out that we, we will get uh, errors. Like, for example, um, I, I'd admitted those two there um, and previously I'd spelt my, my function wrong. Um, which were just two, frankly, quite careless things to do, really. But you can see that we've got um, a couple of um, a couple of nice functions there that do something. So I can change this into multiplication if I want by turning it into the asterisk, and then I can go here and I can put three, three, and I, the answer I get is now different. The answer is nine. And obviously, you can do things here in terms of taking the, the data that has been put in. A, by the way, I've, I've been Quite bad here. I should have indented all of this stuff. Um, okay. um, you can take the data that, that's put in, so the user putting all this stuff in, and you can do things like turning it into quizzes. You can do things like turning it into um, things that are much more useful than what I've just um, displayed. But that's it. This is it's, it's a basic kind of uh, intro. It shows you a couple of um, examples of functions that you can do, um, and you know, have, have a go, have a practice, have, have a play with this, you know, turn, turn that into uh, a range of different calculations. I mean, you, you could even have multiple different functions. So instead of, instead of saying do calculation, it would say maybe uh, addition or subtract or multiply. So you'd have multiple different functions there rather than just the, um, rather than just the one. Okay, well, um, fingers crossed you've managed to get that um, working and um, I will see you in, in another video Soon. Thank you for watching again. Um, take care.